Morning, hound dogs. You just want a ranger ride, huh? Boo. Morning, Jim. Morning. First thing we gotta do this morning is get the combine out of the way here and bring the ripper in. We changed the points on the ripper 500 acres ago. That's not a lot of acres. They should go a lot longer than that, but our soil is so hard and so dry this year because we haven't had the moisture that it just burned those things right off again. So we got nine new ones. Jim and I are gonna throw on again this morning. And you can see by the puddles there, we actually did get a little bit of rain last night. They had a lot more, or a fair amount more out to the west of us, but at least we got something. For the most part, it's soaked in because we're just so dry. So we're gonna be out in the fields later spreading fertilizer and running tillage. But for right now, it's a little bit slimy on top. So we're gonna fix up a couple of things here and just be ready to go when, when, when the fields are ready. Now we'll put this big pig in the shop and swap out nine of those. We need every inch that this shop has got to get this thing in here. Close the door because it's a bit chilly out there this morning. The worst part about this job is digging that mud out around the bolts. Yeah. Might be out easier now than it would have yesterday. Uh, as hard as it was, yeah, that's true. Old ones, new ones. Well, that job's done. Thank goodness there's only nine of them. And we got this little guy. Uh, dropped a disc. But you said the disc is, it's there, you saw it, right? You know where it's at? Oh, it's in back of the dually. Oh, it is, okay, all right. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks heavy. I guess I'll find out. You guys are in luck. I'm gonna show myself wrestling this thing out of the truck and then you can criticize all you want. We made a mistake, Jim. You see it? <laughs> I put it in upside down. I didn't get it backwards, though. That finishes this job for now. This thing should be good to go other than diesel and deaf. Good? Pretty handy rolling tanks here if anybody's interested. Get in touch with fluid all. We got our oils in them as well. According to Brian's farming videos, you gotta put your government juice in here. And I have just named the diesel, I renamed it Broken Down Prehistoric Living Matter Juice. It rolls off the tongue nice, and last year I got chewed out when I called it dinosaur bones. Morning. Morning. I think it's too wet to go here, isn't it? Well, I wondered that too. It seems so widespread. There's, Becky said there's guys going towards Morris, which I would have thought would have been wetter. Yeah, I would have thought so. But it's pretty greasy. They're going by our place, but we don't have puddles at all like this. So no. The disc roots and that's firm. Out here it's a little squishy. You see that? 
that shank right there, yeah, that's that's messed up. Um, this might I can wiggle this out by hand, but it's not gonna be light. It's gonna be a little easier to get to it with the wings out of the way. This is every bit, it's not heavier than my... a lot of heavy metal work this morning. Nut just come off. Is it not even broke? It doesn't look broke. Yeah, the nuts just done, but the threads are. If we can get it off, I think we still put, on a new, put one. a new one on. Boy, if you made this a quarter inch wider. Ah, that was easier than I easy. thought. Sure, the nut just came off. Can't blame that on our trail. No, we don't have a washer, I bet, for the second one. So maybe we got one in the tractor. Oh, yeah, we want one. I think we got her fixed. Dad's gonna run out here. We've only got about 50 acres left in this field. He's gonna polish that off. Looks to be doing a good job of what it's supposed to do. I think my work here is done. Looks like it's doing a good job. I'm gonna go check and see what kind of job Jim's rig is doing now. It is considerably drier down here than just a few miles north. It's crazy, that rain was just so variable. I'm glad we sent Jim down here instead of working the field at home because this is way drier. This field also got bailed so the landlord took the uh, corn stock bales off of here. He's got cattle up there that he feeds, so works out well for him. That looks good to me. There's not a ton of residue on this field because we bailed, but this, is, this part of this field is actually really heavy anyway, so that's gonna be okay. High fertility and really heavy soil down here is it does get a little bit of manure once in a while. And uh, we're actually right down near a river bottom. So right up here, there's a medium sized river that goes through there. I think it looks pretty good, Seven. At this point, the last few years we've had, it's almost crazy to just be so caught up with tillage. We are not far behind at all. Usually the ground is starting to freeze up and we're dealing with snow and mud and all kinds of stuff, so. This is a, a welcome change. We are supposed to be getting materials for that shed tomorrow. So, that's, that's cool. Which means, of course, that I've been lying to you guys. The shed, the new shed, it does not have transparent walls. They're actually gonna put up steel and wood walls just like this building right here. So a lot is gonna change here over the next couple of weeks. Taking out the garbage. All right, cover your ears. Now I wanna show you guys something really crazy. All around this farthest south bin here, these nuts that hold, these nuts, these ones right here, that hold the floor of the bin actually to the concrete have loosened up. This, this bin, we think what happened was when the tornado came by here, when we lost the shed, the tornado was about a mile, mile and a half south. We think what happened was the, the building, the bin, it ballooned out. It had about a third full of corn in it, 30% full of corn, which is what kept it from flying away. But it ballooned out and it stretched and it moved just enough and it stretched and pulled these bolts that they're no longer tight. Up front at the unload here, it actually broke one off and it pulled this flashing out. It seems like it's kind of back into place. We just need to screw that back on, but obviously it, it moved. We've got some corn in it now. It seems like it's gonna be fine, but I'm gonna go around tighten these bolts and just make sure everything's pretty solid. Every one of them. 
I noticed this too. The flashing here around this bin has moved and when you look underneath, it had actually pulled away from the air tunnel here by about an inch. Now I hammered on this to try and close it back up, but I could only get it about halfway or less. So it's still open. I might actually try to push on a little bit with the skid loader bucket just to push it back some and hopefully tighten that gap. I have no idea if this will be successful or not, or if I should be trying it at all, but, but I'm going to. All right, let's go see if I broke anything. No, and I actually, I improved that quite a bit. Sometimes I amaze myself. Dad is back, so I'm guessing he finished that field up with the chisel plow, which means we're actually gonna take that chisel plow off and put the big heavy Wishick disc that sits out here on this tractor for now. You know what, I hate to disappoint, but I gotta do my second job right now. Dad's actually gonna switch and put the Wishick onto that uh, tractor. And then I got a whole bunch of other things going on tomorrow. Right now, my second gig is making videos for you guys, and Becky needs a little bit of help with that because we have been overloaded lately. We've had a lot of kids and a lot of sports and stuff, so we're gonna fade this out and I'll see you tomorrow. Morning, girls. Anna, I think she wants to play. No, go get her. Go get Digi. You could just whine at me, I guess. There we go. A little gloomy out today. Time for some heavy disking. As I've mentioned before, we have a few spots in the fields where we have like weeds and grass growing up because we couldn't plant those areas this spring. Well, there's no crop in them, so the weeds come up. And now this fall, we are bone dry. So I'm gonna go tear those spots back up. This thing is loaded full of grease zerks. Holy cow. Well, if you don't have a wish I can you ever get one, make sure you buy an extra box of grease. I'm on to my third tube. I think I gotta spin it around, back it in the shed here so that I can get room to open it up. Cause so I gotta get out to the wings as well. Thing looks bigger than I remember. That's what she said. Well, hopefully I got them all. I counted 9,846 grease zerks on there that I hit, so hopefully that's all of them. And the tires are good, so I'm gonna fold this thing up and go make some spots black. That truck needs more axles. Everybody's busy. Everybody's busy floating fertilizer on and tilling that in for next year's crop. So we put the P and the K down. The only nitrogen we'll put on is, is not really with a floater, but with the anhydrous bar. So there's a little bit of that going on. There's one of the neighbors out there running Ripper. Everyone's busy kind of finishing up. I would say right here in our immediate area, we're down to about 10% of the acres left standing. So there's a little bit of corn out there, a uh, little bit in the area, but it's all going fast right now. Everybody's kind of right behind with tillage. We've been dry enough and everything's been going good. So that's kind of where we are as of when I record this, which secretly is a few days behind right now. This is clearly the, the uh, one of the fields that I strip tilled, but there's some of these big grassy areas in there that that tiller wouldn't go through, and not a whole lot of tillage equipment would go through that. But this beast does. The ripper or the digger field cultivator or the strip till machine, anything really with a shank just kind of gets this long grass or weeds all wrapped up in it, kind of makes a mess and clumps it up. This does a good job of flipping it over and kind of burying it. It's it's fairly heavy tillage, but it'll go through this stuff. The Mendeco would chop it up really well, but uh, we, we kind of want to do some heavier tillage with this through these spots, because these are wet spots. That's the reason they didn't get planted. So we're going to work them hard, work them deep, and uh, hopefully clean them up and they'll be dry in the spring. This field here, which I've been in about three fields, three other fields since I turned the camera off, but this one here, you can see how dry and hilly this is. We did have a washout right here. I'm maybe gonna come back and get that later. I think the Mendeco BT tool will, uh, will fill that in really nicely, but we're gonna leave these hills 
And we haven't decided if we are going to take the Mondeco over the top of them and just touch them a little bit, or if we completely leave them because they're dry, sandy hills. They don't grow big crops. A little rough here. And the landowner actually has cattle right here next door, so he bailed the stocks off the top. So we might just leave it and hope that we can till it up in the spring because these hills are, I mean, they're definitely going to dry out in the spring because they're never, they're always moisture starved. So I'm just going around in this field and tilling some of the wet spots. You can see in front of me how actually, how black this soil is. It all comes down off these hills and kind of runs right through here. So when you're driving by on the highways and sometimes you see the spots where the farmers work, little areas, low areas or weedy spots or whatever, that might be what's going on. This right here, this is, this is why we brought this tillage tool to this location. Look at that. It's like when your lawn really needs to be mowed and you do a beautiful job of it. Uh, it's kind of relaxing getting out just running tillage. I'm finished with the fields down south now. I'm just headed home, but I'm not used to just like sitting in a tractor and nobody calling me on the radio or calling me on the phone or figuring out trucks running around or what temperature the dryer's at or any of that stuff. Jeez, what a crummy end of October day. I mean, it is just awful out here. Terrible. Huh. I knew I had a bearing out right there because this disc is a little bit wonky. Actually, super wonky. Okay, all right. So I was planning on pulling this scraper off, but it appears as though it removed itself, but. We're not used to discs. I don't know if, it can, can we run that for a 40 acre piece, which is the last that we have left and then fix it after. I'll have to give dad a call, let him know what's going on there. I'm actually by myself today because first off it's the end of the season and we just aren't, we don't need 10 guys going, we're finishing things up. The other reason is because dad's actually in surgery right now, having his uh, wrist fixed, wrist, hand, I don't know, he's got carpal tunnel that's been bothering him for many years, so he's having that fixed, he timed it well. So in the meantime, I got some other stuff that I'm just gonna finish around here and move some things around because the building is actually being delivered tomorrow. So we're gonna take, uh, take delivery of all that. We'll have the materials here. That's gonna be awesome to see that thing finally starting to go up. I, I think I should try to figure out how to do a time lapse of that. Otherwise, that's all I got. It's actually uh, 3.30 right now. So I got some things I'm gonna finish up and we will see you guys later. Thanks, thanks for watching Keep It Between The Rows. And check out Between The Rows, our second channel. Also, go buy merch. There's links down below. Bye. <laughs>